Hey, this is Susan Blanton with the Create Happy Now podcast, and today I have on my show Jean Atman. Jean is a soul evolution facilitator and energy medicine specialist and is a leading expert on how to break free of negative life experiences for good. She has become well-known in her industry as a go-to girl for helping people heal from toxic relationships and past traumas. She remains fiercely dedicated to that cause and throughout her 21-year professional career has empowered over 20,000 people worldwide to live a life filled with potential, purpose, and ease. Jean has a Bachelor of Science degree in psychology and has studied a multitude of energetic modalities throughout her career. She opened to channel in 2011 and has been channeling guidance for her private clients and the collective consciousness ever since. The blend of traditional and esoteric perspectives allowed Jean to tap into a full spectrum of healing potential. Welcome to the Create Happy Now podcast, dedicated to helping you start your journey to discover true happiness. Join me, your host, Susan Blanton, weekly as we explore the transformation stories and words of wisdom from our Masters of Happiness with tips you can start applying today to create happy now. Hey, Jean. I'm so glad to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for joining me. And I wanted to get started to have the listeners learn a little bit more about you. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. It's always such a pleasure connecting with you. Yes, <laughs> um, I know. <laughs> we have so much fun talking, don't we? I know we do. <laughs> um, yeah, my um, sort of backstory, I guess, if we call it, um, I grew up in, with a lot of toxicity around me and learned really early on how to be very aware of other people's emotional states around me, um, just out of staying safe. If those people were at peace in some capacity, I could feel safe. So I got really good at reading other people, kind of reading the room <laughs> around me. Um, but what I found as I progressed through my life was I was continuing to draw in a lot of um, toxic relationships, narcissistic personalities, a lot of people with trauma that were not really doing any of their work. And I was always sort of the healer, the helper, the supporter, the, the person wanting to lift everybody up, whether they really wanted to or not. <laughs> um, and it got to a point where um, the last relationship that I was in was a really toxic, toxic relationship. It was a narcissistic, psychic vampire type relationship. And it really left me completely depleted in a way that I could barely even stand on my own. I could barely recover. I was so completely depleted. What kind and of it, relationship was it? Was it with a significant other or a family yeah. member? Yeah, significant other. It was after my marriage ended and I started getting out into the dating pool again. And I only dated this man for about 10 months, but he came to me with nothing. Um, no car, no real income, was working at a soul level to do soul work, which attracted me to him because I was like, we're on a mission together. We can help people together. But I didn't realize until later that he was actually not working for the light. <laughs> he was actually working for the other side. Oh, um, it, it was really scary. So there was times Devil, where. Devil in sheep's clothing kind of. Thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And um, he was just really siphoning a lot of my own energy. Even when I slept, I would find him hovering over me. I mean, it was just a really dark situation. Oh and I was so committed to helping him feeling like he was must maybe being influenced by other things, but it wasn't until after I kicked him out of my life and I was in a deep meditation and um, he came to me in the meditation and I kind of held my arms open, like I can help you release this darkness. And this huge dark force came up from behind him and he kind of bowed his head and he turned and he followed the dark. And I thought, oh my gosh, it was the first time in my life that I realized that he was choosing to be in that place. He was choosing to stay there and that I couldn't help him no matter how much effort I tried, no matter how much love I could show him, no matter what I could do for this person, he was choosing that. So it's a huge revelation for me in my, in my journey that you cannot help someone who refuses to help themselves. And I was expending so much of my effort and energy trying to help people 
like that, who just were unwilling to do the work themselves. And as soon as I saw that, it was like this light switch flipped and everything came so clear that what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you spending so much time on these people who you cannot help? And so the first person that I decided to start focusing on who did want the help was myself because I was so busy <laughs> working on all these other people who didn't want it. I was neglecting myself throughout my whole life and didn't even know it. You know, there's so many people out there that are in that same position. They feel like they, they, I mean, they, God love anybody who wants to help other people. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just kind of a, a, a natural thing for most of us, but we can't help unless we have filled our cup first, right? So true. So true. And I don't think we really understand what that means. A lot of times mm -hmm. we think, oh, if we're getting enough sleep, if we're eating at least once a day, if we're <laughs> doing all these very, very, very basic needs. <laughs> that we're eating the kids leftovers. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You've got some goldfish left or whatever. <laughs> you know? We're I living mean, on goldfish. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I mean, it's really, you know, how we prioritize ourselves has not been um, really in the forefront of people's minds, especially I think as moms, sometimes we tend to put everyone first. And that's what I, you know, I did my whole life until I couldn't. And when I was in such a depleted state where I, I literally couldn't be there for anyone because I didn't have anything to give, my soul really felt fractured after that relationship. And I thought, um, why, why did I draw this in? Why did I allow so much? And not coming from a place of beating myself up over it, but really questioning what am I doing to draw this into my experience? And I want to stop doing that. <laughs> you know, never again want to experience this. So I took a deep soul dive for a couple of years and just went in and started to excavate all these old belief systems, you know, address all the old traumas, get into all the abuse and the toxicity that I grew up with, and really started looking at everything that I believed and why and what it was attached to in order to start to reframe that experience. And I learned. Oh, go ahead. Oh, excuse me. I was going to say, do you think that the story that we tell ourselves is what causes that repetition and patterns of things Absolutely. Absolutely. We will always validate our beliefs, whether we know we believe them or not. <laughs> so if we believe that, you know, the next relationship is going to be another man child, you're going to get that. <laughs> you know, when you believe that that is the only thing that exists out there for you, you will validate that belief. So you will actually unintentionally seek out that person that will validate those beliefs to you. But the challenge is a lot of our beliefs are in the, un the subconscious mind. So we don't even have awareness that we believe these things. And a lot of these programs are implanted when we are far too young to even understand what we're subscribing to. So we grow up in these ways and we believe these things, but, and then life is reflecting that to us, but we're not quite sure how to translate all of that. I so I was going to say, Go Bruce Lipton said something about where hmm. you learn all of a lot of your programming before age seven. Yes, yes, for sure. And when you think about, you can't have the capacity to really process how things affect you, what mm. things mean. You're just really trying to figure it all out. We're dropped on this planet <laughs> with these strange people. And, and we're like, oh, we're supposed to do it in this way. We're supposed to follow what our parents do as our guides. And if they're dysfunctional, you grow up believing life is pain. Life is dysfunctional. Life is trauma. And that becomes the norm. So to think about creating something other than that can be kind of a reach for people until they start to really recognize how limiting beliefs are affecting their present and their future. Absolutely. And it's a huge factor in your mental health, obviously. Absolutely. Um, you know, there, there's, I mean, that's, it, and, and sometimes you can even have a, a great childhood um, maybe without the toxicity, but it's more of a, you could have a sheltered life where your parents mm -hmm. are, don't do this and don't do that and be careful what people might say this or, um, mm -hmm. y you know, they're, they're, they have good intentions, but it also can give you that limiting belief, mm -hmm. um, basis 
for, <laughs> you know, the lens that you look through everything with, you know, what are going to people going to say, or, Oh, I need to do the right thing. And you end up being a people pleaser or a perfectionist and, and it keeps you from doing the things that you are, uh, you, you know, your, your full potential. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, this can really happen as sort of micro traumas on a consistent, on a consistent basis, or it can be, you know, you're on school at school at a playground and your friend says, I want to play with this person instead. And you think, oh, there's something wrong with me. I'm not good enough. I mean, it can be one instance can solidify a belief system that will dictate your future <laughs> from that point forward. So until you start to unearth that stuff and unpack that stuff, we tend to live in a way that reflects that back to us in our experience. Um, even I had a session with a client and we kind of traveled back into her childhood at a moment that she was, it sort of stuck as a paralyzed trauma and everything changed her world from that point forward. And it came through when she saw her parents as um, potentially getting divorced. And from that point forward, it's like all the expectations of keeping everybody safe and keeping her world together, she took on, on her shoulders, you know, when she Lasting. was six, seven years old. Yeah. So you never know, like one thing without even having a memory of that can completely mm. change your life. And you don't have to go back in and do, you know, all the regressions and timelines, healings and things like that. If you take your current experience in your life and recognize if something is uncomfortable, if you're suffering in a particular way, if something doesn't feel like it's working well for you or easily, that is information that there is something within you that is in conflict with your desires. So if anything that you're having trouble achieving, there is something within you that's conflicting that. So I love to do energy healing. It's one of my main components of my work, simply because it's a beautiful access point to be able to get into all this stuff without having to go through the mental process of all the pain and, and the memories. And, again. Right, right, right. And solidify all that stuff back in and reanimate it back in. And a lot of times we talk about trauma, we stir it up but we don't have an access point for it. Mm -hmm. So energy clearing really helps to move that stuff outward, therefore really liberating you from that experience. So if you're not feeling great to go in energetically clear those things, because everything is energy, we're made of energy. Yes. And anytime there's pain in our bodies, whether that is emotional pain, mental pain, physical pain, it's just stuck energy. So when you clear that, you're free from all of the stuff that's attached to that as well. So it's such a powerful aspect of um, healing and it's so much easier than what people think. We just haven't had a lot of exposure to it in this country, you know? Well, and I think too, um, we more and more are being, well, it's been going on for decades now where the world and a lot of the United States for sure, that's where I live, so I know that more than anything, um, we're exposed to physical toxins. Mm -hmm. And when your body has a lot of toxins and, and fat stores mm -hmm. actually try to protect you from toxins. So that's mm -hmm. another reason why we have an obesity and an epidemic is because our bodies are trying to save us from all the toxins that we are exposed to. And so when you realize that your body is in a toxic state, that's going to affect your mental and, and spiritual state as well. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. it's just the energies all affect each other, but at least physically you can start there and realize mm -hmm. some of the things that maybe you're exposing your body to, uh, whether it's something you eat or the environment around it or, um, exposure to, uh, other energetic experiences that are making you feel like you need to protect yourself. So, um, and, you know, there's, there's so many things that can affect other diseases as well. You know, the cancer and, um, you know, heart issues and uh, that all start with the body and then end up being a mental um, issue as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, we call it dis-ease. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it leads to disease. But stuck energy in the field will set you up for more chronic conditions if you're not clearing things. Um, so you can, you know, get more significant um, 
dis-ease <laughs> if you're not clearing your field because everything's just energy. And if you recognize there's um, any kind of physical pain that you're feeling and start to offset that, you really do clear the congestion of all of that that's attached to it. So you clear the emotions, you clear the programs, the thought programs and patterns, you clear um, the potential of further disease in the body. So just by simply energy clearing, you really are protecting all the bodies, the mental body, emotional body, physical body, spiritual body, energy body, all of those are, you know, encouraged. And like you were saying, they all do function as a whole, as a whole unit, they all contribute to each other. So if you access one of them, you're also clearing through the other bodies as well. So to find the easiest access point, which to me, I love to use energy just because you don't have to get in all the crazy, <laughs> all the trauma, all the pain. You can just do a really gentle, really relaxing and soothing clear. And it does really benefit all those other bodies. What are some of the things that people can do for themselves? I mean, I know that, um, you know, you do a lot of energy work and help that, um, so the other person doesn't really have to do anything. You just kind of get in there and mm -hmm. fix things up for them. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But there, there could be just situations that they might be able to just, um, you know, as soon as you notice it, you can clear it. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so uh, I am a Reiki like a master. Or something like that, you know, that they're just like, mm -hmm. why am I afraid of that? That's silly. And then it's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, recognizing belief systems is huge, um, hugely important, because if you think about it, our thoughts create our emotions and how we feel. If we have a thought, let's say we have a fear that comes in, if we entertain that thought, all of a sudden you start feeling the emotions of it through your body, you might feel contracted in your breath, you might feel tense in your body. And so thoughts create emotions, which, which then create your energetic vibration or your energy or what you put out into the world. Mm -hmm. So that's when they talk about law of attraction, how all of that that's created through the thought body will then manifest around you because wherever you're vibrating at, you will draw in a similar frequency, a similar vibration to that. Um, so it's really important first and foremost to start to control your thoughts, because when you can do that, then you also control everything that follows from that point. Right. Right. And I also think that, um, one thing that I have experienced is you'll find yourself all tensed up when you don't even need to be tensed up, you know, and, mm -hmm. and and I notice that once I start to just notice that and just relax my body, like, why am I like, you know, when I have no reason to be, but mm -hmm. I'm just tensed up and, uh, we, we can't go around life just constantly just, and it's almost like you're ready for the next, uh, uh just be prepared to fight or fight, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if we're constantly in that, that state of physical preparedness, um, your body's just going to be in that energetic state all the time. And it's mm -hmm. exhausting. Mm -hmm. And if you just relax, that relaxing first helps you to start really looking at beliefs Mm -hmm. I found beliefs in a more objective. So you're not like, oh, what, you know, what's my reaction going to be? You just relax mm -hmm. and then yeah. think about, okay, why am I, why do I believe this? Is this mm -hmm. serving me or is it not serving me instead of reacting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good point. Just to find your center first before you react. So coming more from a response, whether rather than a reaction is really mm -hmm. important. And when we can come into that place of center, it's a lot of people don't understand maybe what that means, just because as a society, we are pretty much in survival mode. A lot of the time, we're in fight or flight, you know, our nervous systems are sort of jacked up <laughs> consistently, right. you know, people have a lot of sleep disturbances and all these things and anxiety and depression, and all these really high ups and, you know, ups and downs. As a society, that's sort of the dominant 
of what we experience. So especially being empathic, like a lot of people are, you're not only picking up your own stuff, but you're also picking up the collective energies around you, which tend to amplify then what you're feeling, which makes it even more challenging to remove yourself from it. But when you can recognize this doesn't feel good and I don't want to feel this way anymore, <laughs> that's the first step. And then from that point forward, your, your life and your road and your path is a lot easier because you're not inundated with all the crazy stuff around you, but you can make a choice as to how you want to feel. So I love that you said, you know, just relaxing. And I love the word softening because sometimes even relaxing, it's like, I can't relax. I'm so stressed. But just think about like softening through the muscles, like, oh, I can maybe reach that, you know? So find the word that works for you, whatever that is to bring yourself into that center. And then I love what you said too, because when you are in that place, you can see with so much more clarity as to what actually does feel good. But we walk around not feeling good so much. So when something comes in that really isn't meant for us, that doesn't feel good, we don't recognize it as something that doesn't work for us or that's not meant for us because it's a match to how we're already feeling. So then we tend to go and move in the direction of something else that doesn't feel good just because that's our current state of being. So if you can bring yourself into a better state, you will automatically align with things that are better for you from that point forward. That's why I would say to reverse engineer things. We spend too much time looking outside of ourselves for solutions, but if we go within and self-correct first, mm -hmm. that remedies all these other branch works of things coming in at us all the time. I, I think another thing that uh, what I've noticed I used to do, but I'm, I'm much better at this, is being mindful of what my body is doing. Kind of like what I was mentioning before, whether you're tense or not. Um, I, I mean, there's times where I've had my, my ankle in a weird position sitting at a desk for a long mm -hmm. time, and then I don't realize that it's not a good position for my foot, and then I get up and I about trip, you know, yeah. because it's falling asleep, or I hurt it from being yeah. in that weird position because I'm not being mindful of my body. And I think mm -hmm. we do a lot of that with our thinking. Mm -hmm. We just on an automatic pilot. We're not going, why did I react like that? Why am I thinking that? Why am I feeling that? You know, mm -hmm. I'm just kind of going through the motions. If someone says this, I say that. No, why? Why? <laughs> yeah, there is, unfortunately, there's so many default programs that we <laughs> fall into because it feels easy. We know what to do, how to respond to things, but you're right. Bringing some mindfulness in is, it takes a little bit of commitment to the process, right? And it's not a lot of work. It just takes dedication to it. And as we remember, life is just practice, you know? So we're not yeah. supposed to be masterful at something we've never right. done before. <laughs> It's Let's okay. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know yeah, what you're puppy. doing, it's okay. <laughs> yes. Try this, see if it works or try something else and go, we're not doing that again, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but just kind of try things out, see what feels good, see what feels better. But I agree. Having the mindfulness is so huge because awareness is key. If you have awareness, number one, I have awareness. I don't feel good. Okay. I have awareness that I don't have to stay here. I have awareness that I can make change for myself. Awareness is the only thing we really need, but it's just to pay attention to how we feel because our emotions will always be a great indicator for us. And if something, if you don't feel good, you know, something's not working. Something's not for you. It's time to make some changes. Right. So use You're that as information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And if we can take that as information, as opposed to something's happening to us again and getting into that kind of victim role that we can tend to sometimes go into, but say, I'm not feeling good. And I don't have to stay here. I have choice. I have empowerment that I can do something different. And it's, it's life-changing if you can just take those couple steps to do something different for yourself. Absolutely. And I also think that has something to do with when you're dealing with other people. So, um, I know what I have experienced is to get on the same, I don't want to say level, but um, it, it's, it's timing, it's pause, it's should I say it now or wait until it's more of a time that they'll be receiving what I have to say and they're not going to be defensive at that time or come to a common ground with somebody, you know, match their energy on a common ground. And then weave what you need to say into the conversation. Um, so I feel like that 
energy, energe I don't know how to, I just kind of do it, but it's kind of like just mm -hmm. an energy matching, I guess, maybe, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, if someone's laughing and having a good time and you need to tell them something just, um, you know, happened and you're like, Hey, can you come here for a minute? I need to talk to you. They're like, yeah, what? And then you go, okay, I need to tell you something. This, this happened instead of just busting in and saying, this just happened. Um, you know, it, you, you need to be careful on how you approach people mm -hmm. on anything. You know, like if someone just came in from a horrible day or something just happened and you're trying to tell them something that happened to your day, mm -hmm. get a feel for what's going on with them and see if they're ready to hear that yet. Mm -hmm. And if not, you know, ask about their day first, get them into a, a place where you feel like they might be ready to receive what you have to say and then say it, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it's really important um, to the, to your point too, is to make sure that we're always processing our own stuff first. Mm -hmm. A lot of times if people are triggered by something, they want to instantly go and talk to the other person about it. You need to fix this. You need to not do that because it makes me feel bad mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, really kind of taking responsibility for how we feel processing through whatever that is. And then talking to that person when, when we are in a more healed or balanced state too, I think that makes a difference in how things are received when there's, there's less blame, shame. And it's more like, this is what my experience is. And this is how, you know, I'm being influenced by what you're doing and can we evolve from where we are into a better state of being all together. Um, but I do think that like to your point, to really pay attention to how other people are around you and to see where you can meet them. And it's just, again, a mindfulness. It's not like it takes a lot of effort and it's just practice again, but it's just being mindful of, of how you might be impacting or influencing someone else around you and just being honoring of that person. There was something that I heard a long time ago. Um, it was a saying, it says, I want what you want for you. And I thought that was so cool because it's, it's less about the expectations of what you have for other people. And it's more about, I honor wherever you are. And, you know, I know that yeah, I trust your own process. I trust that you know your own process and I want what you want for you. And it just sort of alleviates some responsibility that we carry for people because I think so many people take on way too much responsibility that isn't ours to carry. And we don't know that we're doing it because we're so used to it, but we just have so much baggage and things that we're lugging around in our fields. And when you drop that stuff off and give it back to the other person to carry their own stuff, then they have the opportunity to do something with it and to ultimately help themselves evolve on their own path. Right. I mean, just like we should not base our happiness on our environment or what's what we have, what we can, what we have, what we can do, what we can't do, you know, who, who's in our life, what are people doing for us? Nobody makes you mad, nobody makes you sad. It, mm -hmm. It's all it's all on you. Um, yeah. How you uh, are going to react, how you're going to respond, how you're going to feel. That's, that's all you. So your happiness mm -hmm. is your responsibility, your choice. But the greatest thing too is you're not responsible for anybody else's happiness either. Now it doesn't right. mean you have to be mean, you know, you need to be in alignment and uh, yeah. you do what feels good to you for someone else, but mm -hmm. you can't accept blame either. If mm -hmm. somebody else is upset about something you mm -hmm. did, um, or said, uh, I mean, you, you definitely can apologize, but, uh, mm -hmm. because you didn't mean to do something, but you're not responsible for somebody else's happiness mm -hmm. or how and they that's feel, part how of, they react. That's part of the old paradigm too, is the blame, shame, guilt, manipulation, all that stuff is, is sort of the old earth. Hopefully mm -hmm. that it's continuing to die out as we're moving into this ascension process. Right. We're really moving away from those energies, which is great. But what happens, of course, when we're elevating, we get the opportunity to purge everything that's not <laughs> aligned or able to come forward with us. Mm -hmm. So many people might be experiencing right now all of those, those triggers of the blame, the shame, the guilt, the manipulation surfacing. And the reason why they're surfacing is because they're ready to be looked at and healed and cleared. Mm 
And so if we can recognize it's not something to stuff or suppress or try to escape from, but to really look at it, because sometimes those shadow parts within people can be a little intimidating to look at just because we've been really good at hiding them. <laughs> and so when we, you know, kind of look at them square in the face, we could just ask, what do you need to heal? What do we need to let this go? What do we need to release this? It doesn't have to be something that we need to continue to carry. And when we let it go, we can more easily move into, um, better states of being and open up to things that actually do feel good and cultivate new types of experiences for ourselves. Because we're in this massive transition right now, which is, it's intense, but it's productive. <laughs> so if you can sort of learn how to process those worlds through your emotions and continue to take steps and directions of things that feel good, you're always going to land where you need to go. And there's, it's less about, um, is sort of all the details along the journey, but more just trusting what feels good. Mm -hmm. But it's tricky sometimes for people to get in touch with their feelings when they've been really good at suppressing them due or to meeting other people's they expectations. They're supposed to not right. show their feelings or right. feel things. They're supposed to stuff it, you know? Yes, yeah. It can be really challenging to get in touch with your feelings when you have grown up that way or have those belief systems that have developed. And so I always encourage people to really get in touch with their feelings and especially anger, sadness, grief. It doesn't feel good, but if you can let yourself feel it, it tends to move outward. Mm -hmm. But if we suppress it, we, we solidified it and we grounded it and we still are holding it. And then eventually you get this eruption <laughs> of emotions, right? Which is so uncomfortable for the person as well as everybody around them. <laughs> so if you can work with them when they surface, it's so much more manageable than to stuff it and wait for the, the huge volcanic eruption <laughs> of everything. Right. And I think sometimes when you do have that fight or flight feeling, such as anger or uh, frustration or uh, fear or whatever, to go ahead and let your body express that, um, either hit a pillow really hard or run up and down the steps, you know, make your body think that you did something. Right, right. And anger, I always say anger is such a gift because it is a boundary setter. You cannot ignore when you feel angry. It's so loud of an emotion and it's an active emotion. So it's, mm -hmm. it's asking for you to do something with it. And typically speaking, anger is a boundary setter. It's like, this does not feel good. I need to not allow this anymore. And anger gives you that energy to be able to do something with that, to set that boundary because it trumps all the other systems that are at work because it's just so big and loud and sometimes obnoxious. So when you can come and utilize anger from a heart centered place, it's an extremely productive emotion but sometimes it can be scary just because it's so big. So I encourage people, that's why, you know, process your own stuff. Don't involve someone else until you're kind of in control of your own stuff. Figure out what you need to do with that. Let your emotions lead you, feel them, <laughs> and then decide how you want to put that into practice. You know, I remember that as a young, at a very young age, um, anytime I got upset, I went to my room, and shut the door and dealt with why I was upset. Mm. And then, yeah, I guess it's like I put myself in time out, even though my parents never like told me to go to my room or <laughs> gave me a time out. I just, I, I needed to kind of collect my thoughts and, and, uh, you know, just feel the feelings. And I still do that. You know, if I'm upset mm. about something, I will disappear for a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm just, it, and then sometimes I'm like, well, was it really worth getting upset about? You know, is it, right. was it just me reacting or was it, you know, how, how should I respond? Should I let it go? Can I let it go? Mm. Um, and if I can just go ahead and let it go, uh, or learn from it or whatever, and then come back in more of a calm state and mm -hmm. either, you know, just say, Hey, I, I just need to cool off for a little bit. Everything's cool. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. good. I'm all right. You know, or I really need to, to, to talk this through in mm -hmm. a calm, you know? So, um, I think it's, I don't, I don't know exactly what I'm doing there energetically, maybe just kind of just getting in alignment with mm -hmm. those feelings, um, or just, uh, letting it calm 
Mm -hmm. It sounds like, you know, especially if it's, if you're having dealings with another person, mm -hmm. just even to separate yourself from their experience is such a productive piece of that to really get in touch with what you're feeling beyond, you know, the, the energy exchange happening between the two of you, give yourself some space. That's such, a, I think you're totally following your intuition when you do that and knowing that you need that space for yourself just to discern your own feelings regarding it to get clear. Yeah, most of my frustrations come with technology. <laughs> oh, girl, I feel you. I feel you. It's my nemesis. <laughs> I've, I've got, I've got my sage here to burn yeah. around technology when it decides right. to like be uh, uncooperative. You know, my, my my printer or my computer. I'm just some days I'm like I need it to work, so I burn it. I'm like come on, please do something. <laughs> I know sometimes it's crazy. My 17 year old, she'll just stand by me and everything works better. And I think it's just her energy. She just, cause she has such ease with it. It's like, oh. I can I just get some of that mojo over here. <laughs> just, just, just blow works. it over here. Right. <laughs> just, just rub yourself all over my computer for a second. Just to <laughs> let the stuff work properly. I get it. <laughs> I have crashed an iMac which they say that they're not crashable, <laughs> but I crashed the iMac. I crashed a work computer at work, you know, what, like, mm -hmm. uh, and I remember I moved, I made a move to a new house and I was very distraught about the whole entire thing. First week, 11 light bulbs burn out. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I couldn't wear a watch for a long time. I would short it out. Light bulbs would burst around me. I was I was at Belk one day and, and the cash register started smoking. So I started to, <laughs> to back away from the register. <laughs> Sometimes I think our energy is so strong it competes with other things. But I do think that's happening less and less, I think, as, as we're learning to kind of ground our energy and get more into alignment. But when you get those really big bursts of it, yeah, things around you, it's, it definitely affects. What's crazy <laughs> is when you know somebody else who is like that um, and they get upset and you're just like, you need to mm. just back away. Right. And cool off because it's just going to get worse. Right. It's just going to just, so loud. it's going to be a domino effect and mm -hmm. this is going to work. Then the printer's not going to work. And then, right. you know, so yes. yeah, when I see it happening, I'm like, okay, just take, go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I yeah. leave myself from the technology room and, you know, so, like today when things weren't working a little bit earlier mm -hmm. I was like oh. yep <laughs> get into some earth energy <laughs> I know It'll be all right. Let it go. it's okay Jean understands <laughs> that's right <laughs> and we have mercury retrograde coming up too which is all about you know communication transportation all that and you know I before when I first started learning about mercury retrograde I was terrified of it because you know things are going to go wrong you know if you're working on anything project wise with tech it's it's going to be hard and and I had this belief about it because that's what we're told you know to mercury you know stay away just sleep for the three weeks that it's in retrograde or whatever just emerge when it's done but I started to work with the energy, learn how to work with the energy more. And it's such a productive time that I actually look forward to it now because I know now if something's not working, not to force it like I used to. I used to force my will and say, we, I don't care if I'm sitting here for 17 hours, we are getting this done. And it was a horrible, frustrating experience. And now I'm like, okay, I'm not supposed to be doing this now. We're supposed to be working on something else, or I'm supposed to be sitting outside in my grass or hanging out with my kids or going out, you know, and doing something different rather than what's so frustrating currently. So if we listen to those cosmic gateways like that, we really can be directed to where we're supposed to go. If, if we avoid all that frustration and when we feel it recognized, we don't have to be in that state of being. <laughs> this will be here in a couple of weeks from now, we can finish it then. And to, to listen to that energy because it's such a productive time, especially when we take that time to go in and see what's coming up right now that needs some extra attention because I'm obviously very clearly not supposed to be working on the computer. <laughs> so how is my time better spent? <laughs> and when I started to do that, I just found it so much more productive and joyful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's easy if, if you can do that. Um, 
mm-hmm. there there are times where I've um, crushed my my car battery. Oh, a few times. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Why is your battery always? Why am I always having to change a battery? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just vibrating really high right now. (laughs) I just don't know what's going on. I don't know what to explain, but right. (laughs) Let's fix it, please. Yeah, a lot of people wouldn't get that (laughs) that type of talk. Yeah, but it does make a difference when you're channeling, um, you know, in your center, and and I think it's actually and that little reminder too to just come back in and and let go of things that aren't working because those things can feel like they're so loud and we can tend to focus on that stuff. And, and um, like you were saying earlier, just coming back into that place of relaxation and centeredness and ask, you know, do I really need to be exerting so much effort on something that isn't working or can we just manage this and keep moving on without giving it too much attention? Right. right. It's kind of helpful sometimes too. So you, can you give the listeners an example of maybe a simple way to recognize a belief and maybe clear it for themselves? Maybe it, maybe the more superficial ones. I mean, I know there's mm-hmm. we, some of them we've got some deep, deep, deep <laughs> that we don't even know what they are. And then we'll need your help because we don't even, I've got some beliefs. I don't know what they are. Can you go right. in there and just find them and just erase them, please? Right. <laughs> um, but, you know, just some it's 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 good practice to learn a belief Mm -hmm. and go oh that's what i believe about that and that's you know maybe Mm -hmm. not necessarily a traumatic attachment you know kind of thing but uh it could be just something that you learn from society or i've got to do this because everybody else does then why do i need to do that because just because everybody else does um what's what's maybe a little step-by-step thing that people can kind of practice with Yeah, it's a good question. So um, the mental body, how we talk about things can be a really clear indicator when we start to use the words always and never. Mm, That's a good one. Those are great to recognize those limiting beliefs. This always happens to me. I always end up with this type of person. I never get to do this. You know, whenever you feel that level of frustration, always, never, that from the mental body perspective is a great way to recognize those limiting beliefs. So just even being aware when you're saying that to yourself or other people, um, you can explore that. And let's say it's, it's, I never have enough to pay my bills and I'm always in this place of lack every single month and I'm always in a state of fear and wondering if I can do stuff. So those are great indicators that you can write, you know, why do I believe that I always am in lack? Why do I believe that I never have enough? Can I go back to that place where this belief started? Do I, do I remember where this even started? How long have I been carrying this with me? How am I affected by this belief system? Do I, um, or can I choose to believe something different? What would I prefer to believe? How am I in the way of believing that? You know, what actions am I doing to continue to perpetuate this old limiting belief system? Can I make action steps to move into the new and find evidence to what actually is true in the new belief system? Because what we do is we believe something and then we validate the crap out of it Mm -hmm. (laughs) to find every single piece of evidence that we can, why that is true, because we will always validate what we believe. So when you're in the process of rebuilding or building into a new belief system, it is vital to find evidence that that is true. And when you can start to move it from that new truth into the evidence, then you're actually starting to create a new default within yourself. And it just takes, again, the mindfulness practice and the dedication to that process. And it can happen really quickly. In fact, there was, um, when my girls were little, I was running around like a crazy person. I never have enough time of my day. I don't have enough time of my day. I'm, you know, all these toddlers and infants and dogs and cats and husbands and house and, you know, practice and all this stuff that you've got going on. I never have enough time of my day. And I sat and I thought, why am I continuing to repeat this to myself? Because I know how this works. (laughs) So I started to say, I have plenty of time. And I would not only would say it, but I would feel it. I would let myself sit there for a couple minutes. Didn't take more than that. And I would say, I have plenty of time. And I would just internalize that and own it and claim it. And literally 
two days is all it took to completely change my outer world. By dinner time that next day, all the to toys were picked up, all the schedules were done, dinners were made, dogs were taken care of, like everything was done. And I sat there in awe thinking, what do I do with myself right now? <laughs> I don't even know what to do with myself because everything is done and I have time. And it freaked me out how quickly that turned and how effortless it was to do just from my dedication of it, recognizing I'm in my own way and I'm, I'm done being in that place. I'm done being in that state of being and I want to change it. And so you did. And it literally within two days, everything was different. So this doesn't have to be a year later, this will finally come around. Right. The more dedicated you are to that practice, the faster that implements. I think what you said is absolutely like huge. I mean, even without like going back to that place in time that you had that belief, like, like just case in mm -hmm. point, you know, I never have enough time. You didn't really have to go back to that time where right. you started to feel like you never had a time. You're just like, I, I don't mm -hmm. want to believe that anymore. I want to believe that I always have plenty of time that mm -hmm. I, I, you know, just time stands still. I get a lot of stuff done. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you just immediately just went forward instead of backwards mm -hmm. in that belief. Right. So, uh, and, and of course, a lot of us put stuff off or they, we feel mm -hmm. bad because we feel overwhelmed. We don't have enough time to do all the things that we don't want to do. And then we just don't even do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Or it just doesn't get done uh, because you think, oh, that's just such a task. It's going to take forever when it doesn't. I mean, like, for instance, mm -hmm dishes, you know, dishes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you look at them on your countertop and you're like, Oh my gosh, I don't want to do this. It's going to take forever. But when it really only takes maybe three minutes. Mm -hmm. And the time that we spend thinking about something is usually more time consuming than the actual task itself and more energy draining than the task itself. Yes. It's an yeah. energy drain <laughs> and it just mm -hmm. pulls on us. It makes mm -hmm. us tired. It makes us overwhelmed. It makes us feel like we're less than because we're not getting things done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And I, I watched this um, video the other day um, and it was about this Navy SEAL Marine that uh, talked about all the things that he learned about from being in the Marines that mm -hmm. helped him with his days, uh, I mean, his life. And he, basically the, the whole premise of the thing was, make your bed first thing in the morning because at least yeah. you got the one task done and then you mm -hmm. have your bed nice made bed to come mm -hmm. home to go you know to to go to bed it's nice and neat made and you know i used to make the bed but then i just kind of got away from it so i was like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna start doing this and it really did make a huge difference mm -hmm. I, I couldn't believe it i mean it just doesn't take that long. And if you've made your bed day after day, it doesn't get all messed up either. Mm -hmm, it's easier mm -hmm. to make every day. So it only just takes like a couple minutes. And then even if that, and yeah. just think of all the other things that you're doing in your life, whether it's contacting, calling your mom, you know, Oh, I don't have time to call my mom or mm -hmm. oh, I'll, I can't call my friend. I got to schedule something with them. When you can just pick up the phone, call them, you know, I mean, you can, mm -hmm. you can do things now that you don't have to put off. To it's interesting though, when people are used to feeling overwhelmed, the mm -hmm. thought of checking things off the list really quickly is a very unnatural state of being. Mm -hmm. So people that are chronic procrastinators have a really hard time feeling good about doing tasks because it goes against the belief system that they're always overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. So it's when you start to make those changes in moving forward, as opposed to having to reevaluate the past, when you just decide to move forward, however that works for you, <clears throat> if there is anything standing in the way of making that change, you'll come across it on the path, mm -hmm. you know? So when you see that and you think, all right, so I'm trying to move through this, but I'm finding myself in a resistance to doing it. I know I really want it, but I'm in resistance. That's when you go in and you ask those questions because something is in your way of being able to move forward. So there's a limiting belief usually attached to something else 
that won't let you cross until you remedy that thing. So that's when the curiosity is so important to go in and say, what's really in my way of this? Because it might not be, I just want to free up my time. It might be that I'm really attached to feeling overwhelmed and busy so that I can't get in my own stuff or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, so that's the time to really go in and ask those questions to gain a deeper understanding of what's happening in your inner worlds. Because when you know what's happening on the inside, you can easily change things outside easily. Absolutely. But Absolutely. it's a reverse engineering of what we need to do. You know, even people that want to get healthy and think I want to work out, I want to get healthy and fit, I want to go to the gym. But if they have a belief system that says I'm always going to be overweight, I'm always going to be unhealthy, you know, you can go to the gym, but it's not going to be long lasting because your belief systems are conflicting your behaviors. Right. So it's really important to get clear with what's happening on the inside so that you can make, you know, changes more easily in your external world. Absolutely. That's, 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 so true. So true. Yeah. So I want to wrap up here uh, soon, but I want to have everybody learn a little bit how you do an energy clearing, you know, what, what they can expect during maybe a session mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and also how to, to get started, you know, with you. Um, mm -hmm. what, what would be one of the reasons why they may want to come see you and then what to expect? Yeah, thank you. Um, a lot of people come to me and they sometimes don't even know exactly what is wrong or what's going on that's really blocking them. They just know they feel stuck. That's, that's the same thing that I get a lot is I just feel really stuck and I don't know what to do. Life's just not working. I'm super uncomfortable. I've tried all these things and just can't seem to make lasting change. So they just feel really stuck in their experience. Not sure if they can do it right. And there is no right or wrong way to do it. But sometimes when they can really get clear as to what's happening, they can make fast change. So while I am a Reiki master, I'm trained in several modalities. I opened a channel in 2011. So I channel a lot of guidance for my people. Um, basically with all of that, it helps me to see deeper into their inner worlds. But at a core, I'm a teacher. I want to show people what's happening within them and empower them to be able to know how to help themselves. So within my work, I'll, I'll help with some heavy lifting and things that are maybe just really that people need support moving through. But at the same time, I really want to empower them to say, oh, this is what's happening inside. And this is how I can access those places within myself. And this is how I can help myself to heal from those things. So um, I typically will not ever do single sessions just because it's such a layered approach. Yeah. These programs and patterns didn't originate in a day and they're not going to clear in a day. So currently I'm offering three month programs where we meet every week to two weeks, depending on what people are working through and just move through the layers. And that way we really get a chance to unearth things, to see what's happening, see where the blocks are, and then give very specific mindfulness practices to people so they can learn how to help themselves in the time in between our sessions. And I'm also very present with people in between too. I don't like to drop people off and say, good luck with all that. You know, <laughs> I like to be a part of the journey just because it's so beautiful, such a beautiful process and so fascinating to witness people really thriving. So um, I'm always there for support to help people continue to move the needle forward. Um, and I also have seen such a powerful connection between coursework and I created my most recent labor of love as my limitless course. And that helps people get in touch with all the triggers, their belief systems, everything that's not working, the self, <clears throat> excuse me, self-sabotage, the inner critic voice, all these foundational things that aren't really foundational. <laughs> they, they provide this rickety foundation that people are trying to, to, to survive and thrive on, but they're just not having success. So I help people to unearth and excavate all those things that aren't really truly foundational and build into something better. And again, of course, just because I really like to be a part of the journey, I offer support with that um, program as well. But all that can be found on my, found on my website at jeanetman.com. And I also offer a free training opportunity for people. It's a webinar entitled How to Prevent Limiting Beliefs from Sabotaging Your Future. And that teaches people really a bit more about what we were speaking about earlier, how to identify those things, different steps to walk through to identify what they are, how they're affecting you, and how to move them out in order just to kind of help people give a little bit more um, clarity, I guess, about how the process works. Because unfortunately, we're not really taught about the process of how to 
um, function within our inner worlds. So that's one of my favorite things to do is to help people learn how to access those places and help them through it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, be, uh, I always ask all my, cl- uh, all my guests, um, what is your favorite quote? I love um, be the change that you'd like to see, be the change in the world you'd like to see, just because I feel like we can each shine our light in a very specific way that can impact the whole. And as an energy worker, I see when people get into alignment, how profound that alignment is in affecting everyone around them. So where we might do a service in this dimension And that affects five or 10 people or 20 people or whatever. When we are in service to ourselves energetically in healing our inner worlds, that is exponentially helping Mm, the collective consciousness Mm -hmm. because you are owning this up-leveling aspect of self, therefore allowing a gateway for millions of other people to also access that place. So um, I, I think be the change, do your work. <laughs> yes. I, I, I stand with a lot of um, power behind that one. <laughs> awesome. Yes, I, that's just so true. So I also wanted to ask you, what is your favorite happy hack? My favorite happy hack. Um <clears throat> So something that I do that kind of keeps me in a good state of being. Yes. Um, I find a lot of humor in humanness. <laughs> <laughs> right. I it actually brings me joy. Um, all the face plans, the mistakes, the crazy you know situations that we come into. I I just have learned to laugh at myself and other people with love. <laughs> But I just think we take life so seriously and it doesn't have to be that way. And I think if we can just laugh at, you know, that, that silly thing that we did that we are felt embarrassed about in the moment and go, what were we thinking in our humanness and just make light of it, you know, that keeps me feeling really good because it's so easy to down spiral into that inner critic stuff and and blame, shame, all that crazy, you know, love vibrational stuff. Or we can just be like, that was me being completely human in that moment. <laughs> right. That's cool. Right. <laughs> you <Have> know, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, yep. <laughs> also, uh, what do you have to offer the listeners for tuning in today? Yeah, my free webinar, um, How to Stop Limiting Beliefs from Sabotaging Your Future, can be found on my website under free training. That is accessible. And um, at the end of that, I also introduce my limitless course for people who would like to dive into the work a little bit deeper. And from signing up to listen to that free training, there's also a discount on that course if people choose to continue. Awesome. That'd be great. And we'll have all of the information in the show notes as well, so they can they can access all the links that you have that they can come in and register for. So, well, it has been a pleasure as always, Jean, to, to have you on the show and to chat with you. It's just so much fun. <laughs> Thank and, you. Uh, I know we're the type that we could just keep talking forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I'm sure you're going to be uh, coming back on the show again, because um, I think we have a lot of stuff that we can, um, you know, Explore for sure. Explore for sure, yeah. So, <laughs> for sure. But Aww. thank you so much for, thank for you. coming on the show, and uh, I look forward to having you back. That sounds good. I appreciate you so much. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Create Happy Now podcast. If you liked today's episode, please subscribe, rate, and leave a comment on the additional topics that you would like to be featured on the Create Happy Now podcast. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Catch Create Happy Now on YouTube with podcast recordings and additional videos. Look out for Create Happy Now Facebook group, courses, books, and more. If you would like to stay on top of Create Happy Now creations, subscribe to the podcast and YouTube channel so you can start your journey to create happy now. You can also find Create Happy Now on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, Stitcher, Deezer, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio.